My name is Sol Ramirez, and I am a 19-year-old uh, artist, musician, and puppeteer. And i am always been in the reggae uh, world for my whole life, just growing up with, with Peter Tosh, Bob Marley, Bunny Whaler, the Three Whalers, and uh, friends with Roger Steffens, Ross Roja. And he really has kind of put me up, take me under his wing and has helped me learn more and more about Peter. And according to Roger, I'm the Peter Tosh expert, which is something I, I carry very, very uh, happily and proudly. I must say, for, for someone who's 19, that's a heavy honor to be bestowed <laughs> yeah. upon you. It's yeah. a lot of pressure. Greetings and blessings, one and all. This is uh, Daddy Lion Shandell. Music and entertainment analyst and historian, a vet radio veteran for 27 years, um, uh, radio personality, uh, running the Roots Dynamic Experience on uh, Radio DLC and Primal, uh, the founder of the Roots Dynamic Sound Movement, which as of 2023, we're celebrating 20 years, you know, and um, Sound selector, graphic artist, also a member of the legendary Meditations for going, going now 16 years. My name is Seb Brooks. I am the founder of Griot Marais, a musician, documentarian, and that's pretty much it. I'm just the one behind the scenes. I remember you suggested doing it backwards. With yeah starting um starting from like kind of the lowest to yeah. uh, the highest ranked yeah i cut out all of the compilations and reissues and right. the ones that were reissued i i put them you know uh next to the original release and cool. it's a it's a total of 20 albums his last release was about 10 years ago back in 2013 which was a triple disc uh album, I guess, which was called Reincarnated Souls. Now, it has two discs of, as far as I know, uh, new material. And then the other disc was a repackaging of the Communication album from 2000. Yeah, a couple of tracks were, omit uh, were omitted, Millennium Rock being one of them. Right. I think it sized it down to 15 tracks. Mm. Um, because there's, I think there's 17 tracks on that album, right? And right. It, it got sized down to 15 on this one. Uh, mm -hmm. this one is number 18 on my list. Uh, I couldn't really, again, I couldn't really find anything that stood out on it, and. It wasn't well produced. Right. Uh, two songs that stood out were. Well, oh, Bunny. Just checking. Bunny don't work with producers. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> if if you if you know me as you as you do, and uh, that, that's from me to you, but but for the uh, for the audience out there, uh, if what if I, if I'm asking a question like that. But something that that isn't well produced, you know, for, so coming from Bunny Whaler, you, that question has would have to be asked. Mm -hmm. But but at, but at the same time, at the same time, just as just as the late great Lee Scratch Perry had done, uh, there 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 had there may there may be some cases, and this is this is where me taking a good look at the actual uh, artwork. Um, uh, and credits might help me in this case. Uh, some, 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 some people, especially when they get older, they, they, bring, they bring some people in to uh, facilitate um, certain uh, production uh, pr production duties, and they, you know, ultimately being who he is he he would still get the top credit because he first of all because he's the one overseeing everything and he'll make the final decisions but uh but as far as the actual work itself it may have come down to whoever uh he hired like 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 in like for instance the, the jamaican et uh, album 
you know, for 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 Lee Scratch Perry. If you if you listen to it very carefully, while he got the main credit, the the co-producers who were listed, one of which worked with uh, was part of I think the Selector or something like that, out of, out of England. That Roger, I forget his last name. That one was the actual producer of of. Uh, Jamaican ET. You listen very closely, just as an example. So you see what I'm talking about. And it, it, it sounds, in other, in other words, it sounded like absolutely nothing that Lee Scratch Perry would produce. You know, right, just right. Like the example. Um, but if if Bunny did bring in anyone, I mean, I I, I can't say for sure because mm -hmm. there's it, it, it's during this whole time as we get to these last albums. That, mm -hmm. that he put out, they have this, this cheapness to it, you know? Yeah. It's a, it's a far, far cry from what, from what he put out, you know, in, in the, in the past. But um, there's two songs I could say, you know, if, if I'm to find two songs that would stand out from it, one is called Vision Land, and then another one is called Fight Harder. Um, those are the ones, if I could say there's two I could listen to. I'd say for uh, for me, I actually have a little bit of a story with reincarnated souls. Is I uh, got the you know the privilege to see Bunny on that last tour in 2016 uh, mm -hmm. for celebrating Blackheart Man for the anniversary, and he came mm -hmm. uh, to to North Carolina. I was 12. I was 12, 13 in that er area, and I was so excited. I you know. I knew Bunny from the Whalers. I still hadn't fully jumped into his solo stuff. I was familiar with Black Heart Man. Um, and I was I was super excited. And we went, and I think he was supposed to start around 9, 9.30 or so. And I believe the announcement was that Bunny is on his way and currently in the area at around... 10 30 uh and then i believe bunny steps on stage at about midnight midnight 12 30 or so so about a three hours late and it was to the point you know i'm 13 years old i think it was on a thursday night so it's a school night still for me and my dad is so excited for us to be doing this but even then he's kind of like we might we might need to start a clock soon and if he's not here by this point, we just might need to count our losses and, and go home. And good thing is, I guess we don't really have much of a curfew in that area for venues um, because, you know, I know like Lauren Hill, Lauren Hills uh, showed up to, to concerts late before. And I remember seeing that, you know, the venue just kind of cut the plug, like pulled the plug on the concert at that point because they're like, we can't go past this certain oh, wow. time. And uh, so I was scared that might happen with Bunny, but I think it, Bunny maybe had a, a, a cold or maybe some kind of uh, some kind of illness that was kind of keeping him from showing up on time. Uh, mm -hmm. They just, kept, I, I think it almost became open mic for opening for Bunny. They're just like, anyone else have anything to do while we wait kind of thing. But man, when he did come on, it was like magic. And mm -hmm. he came on to uh, Rasta Man chant and played a lot of Whalers covers, some some Peter covers, some Bob covers, and um, right. predominantly a lot of his uh, Black Heart Man um, album. And it was magical for a 13-year-old me. And afterwards, we we uh, got in line by his tour bus and we're hoping maybe to get a photo, an autograph, or you know, just give our appreciation. And because he was sick, though, the whole band in the, tr in the bus had their uh, masks on um and we're like he would love to we don't want to risk it though for mm. either side and uh you know I, I was bummed but we both we both told his road man manager we're like hey or someone that was on his team we're just like hey no problem just let him know that we appreciate him coming and for his work and he kind of looked at us he's like i'll be right back and he went in the truck and got brought out a sealed copy of reincarnated souls and oh. was like bunny would want you to have this and i do too and i think 
uh, his name was maybe Patrick Starr, something like that. That was the dude's name. He said it very confidently and boldly. Like he wanted me to remember the name of Bunny's crew and uh, he gave it to me. And man, I just, uh, I appreciate it so much. And it, I got it when I was younger. So it's not in the best condition at this point. Um, the packaging was a little flimsy if we want to go into the the production of the of the the album itself but man that was just such a great moment and I think we uh my dad and I as the bus was was rolling out I think we uh we stood by the bus as it was driving away and we my dad was like let's just put our fists up and thank Bunny as he's driving away and that was the last time we got to see Bunny and it was the first time I got to see Bunny so reincarnated souls has a little bit of a closer closer uh connection connection for me and so it's it was actually at number 13 but as zeb was talking i i bumped it i bumped it down a little bit or bumped it up a little bit because i started re-looking at my list that i haven't looked at for a little while and i you know i I couldn't put it ahead of some things that i ended up putting it ahead of at first so it's at number 15 for me uh, like yeah. I said, there's that fondness for me, but very much so I agree with the production quality just really isn't there. Um, I I believe Communication is a pretty solid album. Definitely not yes. Bunny's best work, but just the fact that it's included. Um, I love a lot of those tracks. Um, I do love, I really love Fight Harder as a more modern Bunny track. Um, his voice is still there, even though, you know, it's, he's older. Um, one thing I also want to point out for just the history of Reincarnated Souls is at the time that's released, it was being promoted as 50 never before heard tracks, um, you know, 50 new tracks from the Bunny Vault. And it was just, I remember people on forums and blogs being upset once they got it because it was false advertising. It was a whole, almost a whole disc of it was communication, the album yeah. out a while before then. So I think it's, you know, it didn't get off to the right foot on the right foot with the audience to begin with once it came out i'd say it contains a lot of his best modern later work but still it's it's still very much lacking in a lot of areas i I didn't really get the chance to take in the fullness of the reincarnated souls um uh um uh set let's say it said it's it's like an album and a both album and compilation so to speak um but the thing is that um when when i when i heard when when i when i hear some of the tracks you know some of the tracks that i'm able to hear i'm like seriously in in contrast to a lot in contrast to most reggae that's been out there even at at this at at that time 2013 the the the, the the production for for many of these like I said I haven't heard all of them so so it's not a complete you know full judgment but but much much of much of the track much of the tracks are re- real tight and and in, and in some cases even better than some of his uh earlier work outside like ne- around communication I w- I will say w- I'll get down into communication uh, later on and I, but I will say that is de- by far one of his all time best. Um, uh modern uh works you know uh so 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 that's why i wanted to know like in like in which aspect of the production are you um are you considering the 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 the, the, the lacking in there i mean, i i think i think maybe maybe some of the tracks that i haven't heard as of yet it sounded it didn't sound like it was finished ah right it sounded like it could be really good demos but some some of them just didn't feel like they were ready for an album yet. Yeah, and you're, and you're speaking in terms of the just the musical element, not necessarily Bunny Bunny's vocals, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, there, there, there's there's quite there's there's quite a, I would say an album's worth of songs that just weren't cutting it, you know, because he was doing the DJ style and stuff. And it, the thing is, it's Bunny Whaler, right? Arguably the best voice out of the whalers out of the of the trio right and for him to sort of stoop low like that and do a dj style you know eh, 
I think that sums up a lot of Bunny's later stuff is more so um, constantly trying to adapt and sometimes some cases struggling to for the current market of where reggae was at that time, where it was very much going into uh, that area and just kind of, I feel like we could have got a lot of stronger work from Bunny if he just stood firm with what, you know, he had been doing with the traditional roots styles. The Solomonic sound. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Next up is Cross Culture. Cross Culture. 2009. Uh, this Actually, was number... 2006. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So that one is actually before Rubba Dub. Before Rubba Dub. All right. Oh, well, when, when, when was that one? That was 2007. 2007? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, Rubba Dub is at the bottom of my list because we can't find it. So right. we don't know what it's going to sound like. So it's yeah. automatically at the bottom of the list. So I, that's I exclude it from my list just yeah. because, you know, I feel like unfortunately it's in that period where i could i ex i know what probably to expect if i was to listen to it but i just figured it'd be it'd be fair to just exclude it maybe this is a time where we ask the viewers if they have a copy to put it up on youtube or, or give us a, yeah. a link or something like that and maybe we'll maybe by if we get it in time for the next video we'll revisit that piece and put it in our puzzle yeah yeah so with that we have cross culture i can't find anything on there that really stood out and some of them were remixes from a previous album from previous uh tracks yeah yeah it, it the, he had an album in 1990 called just be nice uh and there's a couple of those that are remixed from I I had a feeling as I, as I as I was uh, as I was um, skimming as I was skimming through that one uh, c certain ones you you know that are remixes and or enhancements of of previous tracks but the vast majority uh, of them definitely are are uh, were current you, you know they're definitely uh, new. If I could point out one, and it was mm -hmm. because I saw this in the uh, Made in Jamaica documentary. It was his take on I Shot the Sheriff. Ah, yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give him that. If I were to give any song off of that I one, love it, that one. It, was, it would be that. You're the soul rebel, you're the revolutionary, and you're the renegade. You know, the Bob, Peter, and Bunny in, the, in that order. You know what I mean? Bon, Bunny was, was, was a renegade. He got going completely independent after two albums with Ireland. You know? <laughs> Stay, staying on course for, for the whole time, maintaining his um, sovereignty, so to speak, and his uh, autonomy, you know, as an as an artist, as a uh, producer, label owner, uh, the, the, whole, the whole nine. This also transcended ultimately later on into his overall craft. Obviously, it, it's, com it's completely um, out of the tradition he already did a he already did traditional renditions in in the tribute albums, right? So so right now he get he gets to take it take it a different way, take it in a different direction. He's and now he's telling his own original story. So it's a combination of the of the Bob Marley tune with his original interpretation, like 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 he he gave it a cinematic type of uh, vibe. Yeah, right when there. he did the whole the whole like Western narration thing to it and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what I like. Just, just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant with that one right there. I have it last time I listened at the bottom at 23. Um, I, I agree with uh, the higher points of it. I also really like Stand in Love. I think it's a good, a good bunny track. And that's, I first was familiar with it from Reincarnated Souls. And I like, uh, I like ball, Ballroom Floor is is good it's it's remixed but just yeah. because it's ballroom floor it's still it still is is enough to make it into one of my like uh noticeable tracks or so i just say again i'm 
I'd say uh, when there is like kind of the sound effects and synths, they're just a little too high in the mix for me. Mm. Sometimes overpower his vocals. And uh, yeah, and you know, I also say the, uh, I've noticed too once, you know, when Neville Garrick was doing the cover art for Bunny, it was some of the most iconic reggae album covers. Um, yes. And there was at some point where I think Bunny went more digital with the art. And yeah. Um, yeah. and like we were saying earlier with looking at, you know, the, the cover art and everything, um, that's one of the most important parts elite, with street package. now, with what you're going to flip through to pick up a record. And yeah. it just is off to a bad start from there. And I think that it also... It's interesting how a lot of the ones that have the rougher album covers also have some of the rougher music from Bunny's um, catalog. So, yeah, I have it at the bottom. It's still, you know, there's there's no Bunny stuff that you are just able to say absolutely terrible. There's nothing good about it because in the end, it's still Bunny Whaler doing the music, which is Bunny's worst is way better than a lot of other musicians worst, I, I feel. Um, but, yeah, it's at the bottom of the list for me. I, I agree with you. He, he, I mean, I'll listen to that over anything. Modern. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Be before yeah. we move to the next one, which I know you really want to get to, one last mm -hmm. take was, it, it was like, there's that side of it, but I think the, there's, there's the other side of it, which was he was trying to appeal to a younger audience, which yeah. is something you should never do. Totally. Yeah. It, it, you know, you, you, should, you should never try to appeal to a younger audience for the sake of appealing to, to, to a younger audience. Yeah. Let's get to communication. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now to that, I shall give a standing ovation. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. I put this one, one I put this one at number eight on, on my list. It, it made it to the top ten. Um, mm -hmm. Because not every track, but most of the tracks are well produced. Yeah. Uh, the ones that stand out to me are Legends, Help Us Ja, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Bear the Cross. Yeah. Those, hmm. those three always uh, stood out to me. There's a, there's a couple others, but I put down three on, on my list. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. your take? I have it at 14, just right in front of Reincarnated Souls. It's not because I don't like it. I would have loved for it to be in my top 10. I just think that there's, you know, some really good stuff from, from Bunny in, you know, this, the 70s into the early 80s. Um, I love Help Us, Ja. I, I even put right next to it that I, I apparently, I feel that it's the best modern Bunny song from that era. Um, it just, just musically, uh, his voice, it's the, the you know the meaning behind the song it's it's great i love uh bear the cross i also really like rockstone i think rockstone yeah, is there you go uh, there you that, go that one's a really i think it's a good example of buddy really just having fun with the track and you can just you can you can sense that he's enjoying it and i also really love ethiopia as well mm -hmm. and uh, it's refreshing I've since I heard that. yeah this is i think buddy's best example of uh being refreshing like for a new sound for a generation yes. um, while still sticking to the kind of the roots and uh and everything yep. and for basically i have it as his his best later career album absolutely and mo mo most most certainly is uh it's um and the I would I would I would contend uh, just just to get these just to get this part out of the way you know I, I would uh, probably contend that um, especially since this was the first time that he was really going in in, ter in terms of the in terms of the uh, the hip hop uh, thing like like to do a full full on track because there are two of them you know mm -hmm. uh, Almighty right, God is a rapper right. and Teeny Whoppers right there now. I like both of them as a guilty pleasure, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. I really, I really do. And then, and then there's the, the, um, the, like with with with, with Teeny Whoppers in particular. The, you know, I contended that um, 
as 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 the, as the name implies, it was, uh, um, you know, he's you know con he's you know con consider considering the children, you know, he's yeah. uh he, he definitely had them in mind, and um, but I will say it was mixed very well. Yeah. 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 Com compared to what we just spoke about, that right. had a really good mix to it, you know. So I'll give it that. Right. Oh, my God is a rapper too. I'd say even as not a guilty pleasure, it's just a pretty good um modern bunny song. I like I like the mix of it. I think it's I like the word sound and power reference. Word sound and power. Yep. Um, I like the backing vocals uh with his, you know, his rapping and I think it's probably one of his best executed uh, more rap hip hop tracks. The ones that both of you mentioned, Legends, Rockstone, Help Us Ja, all classics, all, all, all sta standouts. And the, and, the, and, the rest of the, and the rest of the album is just amazing as well. Even, even, even uh, Millennium Rock going for more of a uh, Euro disco type, type of feel, <laughs> you know, considering it was done in 2000. So that's the reason why he... Uh, yeah. It, why he did that and, and it was like wow he, he's sealing it off sealing it off with a, a song for the year 2000 and it actually worked incidentally here's a, some trivia millennium rock is the only song which is a shame in, in this case you, you see what i mean millennium rock is the only song from commun from that album that made it on vinyl there was actually a 12 inch release of that oh and yeah i would I would, I would okay. and and uh, at a time when Salomonic was not putting out any th 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 that was the other thing we weren't seeing any vinyl coming for uh for for the, for, the, for for reissues or or new or new releases from that point on we we hadn't seen any right. and 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 that right there for all intents and purposes was one of the last if not the last Salomonic uh, releases from a, from a Bunny Whaler new album ever to uh, ever to be pressed on vinyl. Yeah, that's a shame. That, yeah. that's, that's, that's a big shame because Rockstone at the least. <laughs> oh my God, Rock, 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 Rockstone is, is a killer, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and so we had two other uh, spoken word pieces on there just as well. It, it's uh, it, it's it's something that the the people will definitely you know full joy as far as his is definitely his best modern work. Right. Well, as you can see, I I own a copy of it. So yeah. If, if, it sure if it ain't good, I, I don't have it, you know. <laughs> right. Hall of Fame, a tribute to Bob Marley, 50th anniversary, which was 1995. 95. Mm. So there was a big gap as far as releases, but this was a double disc. Right. Um, so it fun. was, this one is number 15 on my list because he's done, a, you know, quite a number of, Bob Marley tributes, which, because when he did, you know, Sings the Wailers, and then when he did the tribute album, yeah. and, then, and then he does this one, those two were obviously um, done better. But there, there are some standouts on it. Um, Roots, Man to Man, mm -hmm. Ride Natty Ride, and Rainbow Country stood out to oh, me. Oh, which, which, which he did not do prior. So that so that's, that's yes. the concern. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. For um for me, I have it at 17. Um, I very much agree with what you said, Zeb. I think it's I think there's a certain point where there's just there's too many um tribute or cover albums that Bunny was doing. And each time people seem to appreciate them because I think uh, you know, it was singing Bob and for me though there's just too many repeats of the same songs as he'd done before and also i just think two discs worth of covers just for me i i always prefer original over cover albums um and just having two discs of it was just a little bit too long i understand the, the purpose of it um but uh, one thing i did also notice is a lot of them are are played a little faster than the original Marley versions. Yeah. They have a little mm -hmm. bit faster of a tempo. And I think that works for some of them for sure. Uh, Roots definitely is, I think, one of the best tracks on here. I really like Black Man Redemption as well. Bunny's covered uh, that um, mix up. And uh, I think oh, wow. does really good modern versions of earlier Bob stuff. Like I think Judge Not 
um, Simmer Down and uh, Crave and Choke Puppy are also pretty good. Uh, next up is another another gap, 1992, Dance Massive. This is also the last album he did that Shanaki um, put out. Hmm. Um, I put this one at 14. Uh, this is the one that has uh, Don Dada on it. Uh, then, of course, this is this is a dance hall album. All right. Uh, as far as I know, yeah, this is the first time he's he's done, you know. I mean, Gumption, not so much. Th- this right. one, this one was more dance hall. Uh, mm. There's a there's a couple good songs on it, but uh, like the the three I can point out is Dance Half Iguan, Don Dada, and Conscious Lyrics. Um, mm. That's pretty much all I have for it. Don't really have much to say about it. Seriously. Uh, yeah. yeah. I There's some of these words. I also, I tried to get like at least four sentences in for each. And there's a couple that I kind of, I struggled with. Um, I have Dance Massive all the way down at 22. Um, just because, again, mm-hmm. I think it's a little overproduced with the sound effects and the synths and just a little bit too high up in the mix for me. And I also, the, uh, the title track, the, the medley of it for me, it just doesn't, it doesn't blend well with each other. It doesn't mix like uh, going from ambush in the night to them have to get to beating and simmer down. It's just, it's just kind of, it feels more of a, a little bit of a, like a mess than a, a real good uh, medley. I really like uh, Ram dance and veteran and Dundada as well from it. Um, but it's just, yeah, I just put it at the bottom of the list just because there there wasn't too much to it, I felt like. And what was there wasn't enough to bump it up high. I, I, got, I got to tell you, I never really, I, I never really got to, never really got to hear much from, from th- this, this one in particular. I, I do remember hearing a couple of them in passing. Mm. You're not um, missing out on, on much. No. Yeah. <laughs> which so it's which, all which all, right which ultimately comes down to yeah and uh, and if as far as i as far as i recall it hasn't even been reissued so um so there's, so there's well that. i mean none of his stuff has been reissued uh except for black heart man i don't think well black heart man that's island sings the whalers and protest have all been reissued on vinyl yeah, but, but those uh, are those are island albums. Those yeah, are island albums. Yeah, nothing, yeah. nothing, absolutely nothing after that. And we'll get to it. But it's an absolute shame and travesty that Liberation hasn't been reissued. Well, one one more thing I want to say about Dance Masses that I just kind of thought was was funny is "Still the King" is a really interesting track, and it's it's very funny. Doesn't have usually when you know he has this kind of sense of pride in a song. It's still, it's still, you know, pretty tasteful and reserved. And I feel like Still the King is a very interesting, more boastful track that, uh, you know, kind of ironically to me really was one of the, my less, less favorite tracks of the, of the album. So I just thought it was interesting that the one that like kind of has the most um, self-praise in a way was Still the King and how he's still on the scene with, you know, still making the hits was a, a kind of an interesting, interesting one. Yeah. Next up is Gumption. Mm. Uh, I love the cover on it, as you can see. Yeah. You can make it out. <laughs> one of the last really good covers. <laughs> yes. I remember this one growing up. My dad had it on cassette, you know. Um, this is actually the first time he's covered songs that weren't Whalers relate. Ah. He covered uh, two songs well, from the Toots and the Maytals. And he covered two songs from Johnny Osborne. Hmm. Yeah. Um, he, one, he, did man, he, he did manage to sne- sneak a Whalers one in there with uh, Payaka, bust them shut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the, the song that stands out to me on, on this one, I, I did like Payaka. 
Um, right but on. the the one that stood out to me on this one is um, CN Blind, which mm-hmm. is the Johnny Osborne cover. I thought that was I thought that was a very very good cover. Yeah, that's the one that stands out to me on it. So you know, which is why I have it. Mm-hmm. I think it's a really solid you know '90s era reggae record um, from Bunny, and I think it has good um, mixes and fusions of of other styles and in, in genres. I really like Never Grow Old as well. It's just such a lively track and it, it's perfect for the title because it's so it's so lively in, in Bunny's later career years. And um, I really like Payaka as well, uh, See Him Blind. And, and yeah, I, you know, definitely not the, be- the best. And at times I felt the grooves could get a little repetitive. Um, mm-hmm. But still, I, I'd say within that seven to eight, you know, um, kind of bottom of the top 10. I, I like I like gumption at the time I, I was listening to it. All right. Hmm. Uh, let me see. I think uh, Don Man was uh, was was doing it. Uh, for mm-hmm. uh-huh. um, never go old. Um, uh, how, how interesting that that was a that was a Matos tune, but uh, th- this particular rendition sounded a bit more uh, extra bright and festivaly. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, you know, I, I can't really hang with you know something that's you know too bright, like too bright, you know. But uh, it's not not to not to cut uh, you know against the song itself. It's, um, yeah. it's like the, I the said, arrangement was you know, like I said, give your honest opinion. About honest it opinion. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's yeah. only gonna get better as we as we move along. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Absolutely, you know, they, 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 they were they were definitely they were definitely you know misses in in. Uh, execution and arrangement, uh, you know, throughout you know the the later period, you know, absolutely. But uh, yeah, um, so, so so never never go old, you know. Like I said, considering it's a bit too bright for me, uh, that was it's it's sort of sort of uh, sort of uh, I'm trying to trying to figure out how to and me me one who who's straightforward at everything. So sometimes the word just hard to come. <laughs> um, okay, so next up is. Just be nice. Uh, it came out the same year as Gumption, uh, and this is this is like a dance album, you know. This is this is when he did did over Electric Boogie, uh, uh, and he did over Ballroom Floor. That was the one that was on Cross Culture that he remixed. This is the uh, the other one. Wait, as a matter of fact, is it, isn't uh, there a, a remix of this version of Electric? Uh... Uh, boogie on it uh, on uh, cross culture as well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right. Which incident? But but in this but in this one here, the one on just be nice. He he he's, he doesn't go. It's electric slide. It's electric slide. He, he doesn't say that on there, right? I don't think so. I didn't. I didn't think so either. Yeah. I didn't think so either because because uh you know because I was trying to. There's two versions of it on the album. Electric Boogie's the first track, and then Electro Rap, Electro is, rap. The, is the other. Mm. I think he might do that. It's Electric Slide part on there. Mm. Mm. I'll, I'll have to listen to it again, but anyways. Then he did um, Ballroom Floor. Mm. And it has that sample of it. We can dance if we want to. <laughs> we can. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually worked pretty dang. Uh, I, I will say it worked pretty dang well uh, as far as you you know using it as a sample and stuff. But the production of it wasn't that good, especially where with compared to the original ballroom floor is nowhere near it. But no, I did, I did like that sample. But it this isn't a very good album, right? Definitely, you know, Electric Boogie is is the the known one from this album for sure. And I'm actually just really surprised by the the style of this album. It's very different. There's some more kind of, you know, some more disco, some more like kind of more R and B style stuff. Like Family Affair is a really interesting uh track that Bunny sings. Um I put it as one of the highlights. Um, sitting in the park as well and just be nice also i i enjoyed uh you know just if we're being completely honest like you know we should 
Soul Rocking Party really did not do it for me. I think it's Ooh. a borderline, you know, I don't want to, you know, I, I feel bad about saying it, but it's all I right. Didn't, I didn't make it. Um, so I'd say I put it as a borderline shameful remake of the original. And it's just one of the ones that Bunny revisited solo that did not work at all for me. And um, also another interesting thing was bad dub. I noticed it because it feels very rhythmically inspired by the way you make me feel by Michael Jackson, just kind of the overall uh, rhythm rhythm to it not in a not in a there's some kind of case to not be in made a literal way. way yeah no but just in a it's very much kind of uh i'd say also just a sign of the times with that era too um yeah yeah here's the here's the thing about that one okay so this is from uh 1990 mm-hmm. right? um and i, I want to get back to the electro rap in a second because that one wasn't released until three years later that that's when ross got into it that, that, that's when Ras got involved, you know. Okay. Uh, so, so I guess that's when it kind of throws off. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I'm with I'm with you on that one. Uh, 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 soul on the soul rocking party as as a um, as a. Mm, it's shameful because of the timing. It it it, it, it or or it, com- or it comes out sh- shameful on a on account of the the, the timing. In which, uh, in in which it happened. It's, let's say say if he if he did it, if he did something like this, maybe a few years earlier, you know, a few few years prior to 1990, you know, um, which, for all intents and purposes, as modern as instrumentation was back then, sort of, kind of comes off as impossible to 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 think to fathom, but. Uh, but he, oh, no, but t- t- tell you what, if he if he had done it later, I, I, I'll say I'll say if he had done it maybe a little bit a uh, cu- couple years later, maybe no later than about ninety five, maybe or something like that. Mm-hmm. He, it might have been a little, a, a, you know, a little better. Might have been a li- li- little bit better in ter- in terms of execution, be- mm-hmm. because. Yeah, no, I'm 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 definitely with you in in that regard with uh with that one soul rocking party. Okay. Now, as far as electro rap is concerned, I was uh, I've I've been I've been I've been looking for that one for the for for the longest time. More specifically, the video because the video is extremely difficult to find uh to to to, to get a hold of. He was going in on, on on electro rap. It's like I already knew he he was the originator. Of electric boogie, so that was one thing. But but with but on the rap side, now this was like his real first, real first rap, and and like I said, if if you, if you saw the video, and I, and I and I contend that there may be actually another version of this still, because mm-hmm. um, I've been talking to Zeb about this for, for the longest time, but um, no, but but when I saw the video and saw the way he was going in, oh man, that's when that's when you. That's when you would appreciate love, uh, Bunny as, as a as a as a as a rapper. That is when you <laughs> that, that is when you really loved him. He he was man. Are you ready for the big one? The is big, uh, wait one thing I want to mention. I guess that means we're not. Are we including Crucial at all in our ranking? Because I know it's mostly compilation, but it uh, is. From a majority of singles that were were not on an album before, no, we're not on an album. Mm-hmm. Could we maybe at least make a, a, a honorable mention of that one? Sure, why not? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, I love Crucial. Um, I'd say if Bunny happened to, you know, take away the, um, uh, take away the. St- the, some of the struggle tracks and just added a few more originals in addition to the singles that were on it um mm. that you know i have it as an honorable mention at three at number ah. three um mm. but you know it's just honorable mention it's technically um excluded from the list but i just i love uh i love the title track I love Innocent Blood, Tug of War Game, Bright Soul, um, Botteration. Botteration, yeah. 
yeah it's just all so great and it's if this was counted as like an official full-on album again it's you know one of his it, even without it it's an amazing compilation and i'd say after his you know top five or so albums is probably a a necessity for a funny collection i can't argue with that it, it's a brilliant compilation yeah. uh, the thing that here was the thing that just really i was taken aback from it was that he won a grammy for it yeah and i said how can you win a grammy for a compilation compilation there, that's something i and then also he's won a grammy for his bob tributes too so a couple of those i thought the, yeah the, just, the time will tell one you mean right? yeah yeah i i just and and hall of fame yeah mm. yeah the, mm. it's interesting because a lot of those are first the same songs on the two of those uh and yeah and liberation it's it's definitely a really interesting thing um i we'd i guess we'd have to look at what other albums were nominated during those times and kind of see if it was just like these were too good to just kind of not win um even though technically they were more compilations and right covers but it's interesting for sure yeah Absolutely. so here we go <laughs> <laughs> what can be what can be said about this album that hasn't already been said this one is number two on my list oh this album what i love the most about it is how it's a reflection of the past and also uh, how it analyzes the, the future, the 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 future, and also just that the current time when it came out. Mm. You know what he was seeing happening across the world, and the way he was able to put it into songs, like serious thing, which is a partial. It's it's a partial spoken word, right. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about the educational system. He's talking about inflation. He's talking about, uh, there's just so much packed into that. And he's just saying, it's such a serious thing going on in, in, in the world. And then of course, his delivery in the songs. You know that, that thing Bunny does where he sort of, does, he, he does this hard exhale after, after, uh, Saying a verse, singing one of the verses, he does this hard exhale, and it's just, ah. like, it's just like he's really feeling it when he says it. And it's like you better believe what I'm saying yeah. when I say it. And I, I really feel it in songs like that. Uh, of course, Liberation, uh, both of the Mosquito. Um, what was the other one? Uh, I love the song. Didn't you know? Yeah, you know that one. That's amazing uh, song. That's that's an amazing song. It's just beautiful. And back with Neville again, with with that one. Yeah, and, I mean, just I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. So for me, also number two. Uh, it's just like since we've mentioned it, I I haven't been able to stop smiling. Actually, it's just oh, wow. such an amazing album, and it just like I'll listen to it and immediately be filled with energy and like power and uh the horns on it do a really great job of like like rounding out the sound and making it feel really like full and, and layered and the bass is really like the heart of this album for sure it's, and it's and that's what's really i think missing on almost every album after liberation is just like just the fullness of all of the instruments and uh I'd say I'd say it's uh, one of the greatest post '70s reggae albums, uh, you know, ever. Yeah. And just I, it's so amazing. I think also what's interesting is you know you you started with saying like you know what can we say that hasn't been said, but mm -hmm. to me as you know the the youngest out of the the three of us there's so much more it needs to be said so much more than it has been recently i mean yeah. i think 
he because if if anyone is listening out there or watching this like if we had to pick one more from bunny's uh you know solo production releases Mm. liberation needs to be on streaming it needs to be reissued in every single form there can be um because it's bunny has lost so much recognition for newer audiences because Blackheart Man's the only, you know, the only, only one that's like really showing the stand out. Yeah. And yeah, I put for best tracks, I put all killer and no filler and that I cannot name a single track that I wouldn't have in the best there. There wasn't any, I felt, I, I genuinely felt bad if I was to take single out one of the tracks as the weak link yeah. because there really isn't. I, I, I did leave out one because I, I want to hear, Shando, I want to hear your take on it. But um, uh, mm. another thing that, that I saw was uh, this was a little after Bunny died. Someone put up some old footage of a performance he did on the Liberation Tour. And he was explaining what the word liberation meant to him. Liberation begins in the womb. When we were in our mother's wombs, we were nothing. But when we got that slap on our ass and screamed, we felt the pain. And all who felt the pain got the right to be a human being. Got it. Dukes got it. Presidents got it. Peasants got it. (laughs) But it don't take away the equality to be a human being. Yeah, the the so just just the tone alone from uh, from the the opening of the song, food. You know. just the tone that that it sets will get you, get, get you get you ready for for something. That 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 sort of vibe was was a, was another one for me on this one, and um, and uh, of course the, the 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 artwork is definitely iconic, and and that is, that is a gatefold, isn't it? Yes, I can yeah. display it if you would like. Right. So we have. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Right there. Yep. And. That's such a great photo. Oh yeah. Just, oh man, just 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 amazing. Just in inside inside and out, and and so, uh, I mean, as far as the the um, the the disconnect, I, I had to say something about um, um, what you said earlier, Soul, about the losing. Um, uh, can you repeat what you said for, for, uh, verbatim? The, the overall fullness of the instruments as it started turning more digital and uh, just there wasn't that that kind of fullness. Like you can feel it in your chest. You can feel liberation, but it feels like it kind of walk, you know, weakens afterwards. Right. Yeah, no, I know, I, I know, absolutely. That 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 in itself go, you know, goes with it. any anything that 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 sounds that sounds watered down in any shape form form any shape form or fashion. Especially as we were going from the into the later '80s and whatnot. You know that that was definitely that that was the beginning of the void. You know, '88, mm-hmm. incidentally enough, was the same was the same year that da- the dance hall that had uh, reached a major major peak. It was one of it was dance hall's first great great year. You know. All right. Yeah. Any, so, a- anything more anyone would like to say about liberation? I mean, I think if allowed, we could just keep going on and on and on. So it's probably best to cut it off now. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I I agree. It's just that we love it so much. I didn't want to. Just read like okay, okay, let's move on. But right, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll keep it going. Rule dance hall. Rule dance hall. Okay. This one. Who? boy. I put this one at number six on my list. Oh, I, th- I thought you might have had it. Uh, that maybe. Well, we're gonna now. we're gonna get there. We're gonna get because here's <laughs> the thing. I had to really think about 
every album and which album like really hit me, you know, because there's so many. And I was like, okay, I like, I really like this album, but I might have to scale it down a bit because there's this album, you know, so right. we're going to, yeah, but this is number six on my list. Still in the top 10. The, that we one got, ultimately be, became what most people would consider a cult classic in more, in more recent years. Yeah. 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 We oh, have man. Rule Dance Hall, Jelly Session, Camouflage. I oh. love Camouflage. And Bunny and the Roots Radix. That's a good shot. I, I, yes, it, it, it had to be. It, it, it had to be the Roots Radix. Yeah, yeah. That's the, what the, I was talking the, about the, with, the, the, with the bass line. Flabba, Flabba is a freaking terrorist when it comes he, to the mm, bass. Mm, mm, he just, he, yeah. his, his bass lines, like I said, they, they're intimidating you know it's like walking into a dark alley in the it, you know <laughs> in a bad part of town it, you, you know, Just, yeah <laughs> and, and 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 style oh my god is is just dynamite and 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 what, what he did with those fillings on rule dance hall those mm -hmm. those, those, those filling rolls that, yep oh man those alone just pump pump extra adrenaline in your chest. Yeah, you know, S yeah. seriously. Like, like, no, no, it's like it's like you you could, you could feel some reverb come off of those rolls. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. That's the that's the effect. That's the masterwork of of Style Scott right yeah. there with those yeah. extra extra drum fillings. My, if you hear Style Scott play with another bass player or Flava play with another drummer, it wasn't the same. But when Style and Flava were together. It just carried mm. this heaviness to it, you know. Mm. And Absolutely. Rule Dance Hall is a perfect example of that. <laughs> I have Rule Dance Hall at number eight, just because. I mean, it's it's crazy when you think about it. You know, definitely start to fizzle out later on in the career. But the, the top ten you could put for Bunny is just such a powerhouse of of stuff. And um, I I love Camouflage. Um, I really like the the version of Put It On on here as well mm -hmm. the and the uh, the title track as well of course and one thing i put that was interesting was that this feels like what bunny wishes dance massive could have been for that era ah. like, like dance massive like this is exactly what he's going for with you know just the you know the toughest selector and, and dance hauler kind of motto to it and this one proves it for sure. This one's his best kind of of those albums where it's like um, kind of him trying to convey that that message. And it's just has some really great rhythms. It, yeah, it's it's a it's a really great album for sure. And Neville um, Gary again on the cover, mm -hmm. which like you can just tell when it's when it's him because there's mm -hmm. just it puts Bunny in the best you know the best light one thing i will say about uh the rule dance Hall album you, you mentioned put you mentioned put it on that that has to be and i can imagine the both of you will agree with me on this one has to be the anomaly out of uh, out of the album Consi considering it's considering its tone as opposed to the rest of it the rest of it was literally about was literally in the vein of ruling dance hall. you could almost consider this a concept album yeah, know, yeah. For, for for all intents and purposes, and put it on, which you know, for what it's worth, I, I'm th I'm thinking it should have been the, the last track, if if he was gonna if he was gonna go that route in terms of the the arrangement right. of it, you know, okay. because because, I, because I'm saying it, it it sounds better better fitted, it sounded better fitted for another uh, uh for for another album as it, as right. it were, right, yeah. You know? right, yeah, they, they definitely didn't fit the the the, the um the vein of the theme, you know, is, is, is what I'm getting at, you know, right. but you know, possibly, but, it, but it's, a, it's a great, it's a great rendition all the same. Yeah. But I mean, possibly with the next one we're going to talk about, you know, it, it probably would have fit better on, on this one, on this one, yeah. uh, which is marketplace. Ah, yeah. This one was a very that, interesting, very interesting album. Uh, that one was definitely Garrick. Right? Was he? So do you know, if that was, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yes, it's it's Neville. 
Oh yeah, so I'm, I'm mistaken. Once, once I heard the name Marketplace, it, it, uh, it was mistakably uh, Neville Garrett. Yeah. I'm so mistaken. this one hit right on uh, number ten of my list. I can't remember who the band was that covered uh, the song off of it, but I think they were from the Netherlands. Uh, the song in question is "Jump Jump." Interesting album, you know, still still very good in the same vein as 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 Rule Dance Hall, you know, as far as the production quality and stuff. Uh, so the, the songs that stand out there are, of course, Jump Jump, uh, yeah. Dance Hall Music, and Electric City. I put communication uh-huh. ahead of, of Marketplace, and it might be a little controversial. And I, I think also what's interesting, after listening to the album, I thought cool and deadly or electric city could have been a better title for the album over marketplace i feel it gives it a better idea of what you're going to be listening to i think electric like setting the tone right yeah yeah definitely i really i like jump jump um i put dance the night away as well for one of the songs that of notice and uh yeah i it's it's a good it's a good album it's it's enjoyable it's just to to me not uh in the same ranking as you know the top 10 it's it's close it's i'd say it's kind of it's favoring the top 10 more than the uh kind of the middle area before you know the lower rankings right Mm. yeah on, uh, by the way, it was the the Walkman was the name of the group out of the uh, that, that that covered it. Ah, thank you. The, the, the cover jump jump. Right there. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Walkman. You have anything to say about it? Uh not not too not not too much at the uh, at the time being. I sadly never got really to to as as as, as many times as it as it. Uh, Stared at me in the shops. <laughs> it's a record shop, which which is which is how I which is how I, I recognize the cover. You know, the, the cover right. is e- easy to spot. You know, um, the, the, not much, not not enough experience with it though. Isn't it kind of ironic too? It's called Marketplace. Now there isn't a song on there called Marketplace, so I don't right. know why he called it Marketplace. But you see, it's called that, and it wasn't it wasn't really marketed well as far as yeah the title and cover yeah yeah um okay we can leave it at that we are about halfway through we made it halfway through Woo. 